Having a good suspension system is not all about flex or being able to hold it together around a high speed corner. So much more of it is about having the right coil springs matched with the right shock absorbers that are all designed for your four wheel drive and the way you use it. So in this video, we're going to look at good coil springs and remote reservoir shock absorbers and really delve into that. Here at Mad Mat 4 Drive, I'm all about educating and building the four wheel drive community so we can wheel well. I'd love it if you'd hit that subscribe button and hit the bell as well. So there's two main reasons I wanted the remote reservoir shock absorber. Cooling and adjustability. I want cooling for the corrugated dirt roads where it's extended periods of time at high speed where the shock absorber, absorber is working really, really hard. And I want the adjustability because I could be towing, I could be single vehicle heavy loaded, I could be single vehicle light loaded, or I could be low speed off road. But those are the two reasons I've chosen this remote reservoir shock absorber. Let's delve into some of the tech that's going on inside these. So Terrain Tame has supplied me with this suspension system, but in no way are they influencing the content and the opinions that I'm expressing in this video. So having shock absorbers in your four wheel drive are absolutely essential. Like without them, the vehicle is undrivable. <laughs> <laughs> That's a shocker, <laughs> literally. So the main job of any shock absorber is to turn springs bouncing energy into heat. And then it has to dissipate that heat. That's what a shock absorber, any shock absorber is seeking to do. Now, the more off-road or harder we work that shock absorber, the more heat we generate, the more heat we've got to dissipate. So that's where these remote reservoirs come in. <laughs> About to drop my job. Okay, so we can increase the capacity of oil inside the shock absorber. That means we've got more coolant inside the shock absorber. But what we do, we can also do with the, these remote reservoirs is we put a floating piston in here. And this piston can just travel up and down the, the reservoir as needed. On one side of the piston, we'll have oil. And then on the other side of the piston, we put a nitrogen gas charge inside this Schrader valve here. Nitrogen is an inert gas, so it doesn't have any explosive properties or anything nasty like that. So that piston, the nitrogen gas there, we can put 150 psi of pressure into that. That means that we've now got that pressure applied to the whole oil system. And that gives us some really good advantages for the cooling. One of the advantages is that we're forcing the oil against the outer surface of this reservoir, the hose and this body. Therefore, we get better heat transfer from the oil into the outer body, into the air that's flowing past the shock absorber as the vehicle travels down the road. So that's a really good advantage. But there's another really big advantage of this high pressure system. So on the end of this shaft is another piston that's bolted onto it. And that piston has a shim stack. Shims are like little metal washers or plates, very specially designed and very specially packaged together to give us the characteristics of the shock absorber. And as this shaft goes up and down inside the body, that shim stack travels through the oil. And that's where the heart of the shock absorber is all happening. And as that oil is traveling through that shim stack, it generates the heat. And that heat, when it travels really fast, can generate aeration and boiling of the oil. Now, the higher pressure that oil is, the less ability there is for the aeration the cavitation and the boiling to happen. And so that pressure gives us an excellent ability to resist that. Now, if we have boiling and aeration, the oil's effectiveness as it goes across the shim stack is dramatically reduced. And that means our shock absorber doesn't work as well, therefore the vehicle doesn't handle as well. So that pressure gives us a significant advantage in the way the oil goes across that shim stack. That is really cool. 
Now in an extreme environment where we're doing extended high speed off road and maybe it's a particularly rough road, so the shock absorber is potentially traveling its full length, you can imagine that we're dealing with significant heat generation that we need to control. But we also need to make sure that the components within the shock absorber can handle that heat. So obviously the metal components can handle it, but there's seals inside there and there's and these seals some of them are pressure seals some of them are wear seals they need to be made of the materials that can handle that heat so we're using teflon and we're using materials like viton in various components and these are all really good at components to handle that heat generation and all of that tech's obviously been going into these terrain tamer pro series shock absorbers as four-wheel drivers around the campfire, you'll hear many of us talking about how much flex my four-wheel drive's got and it articulates huge and all of that sort of cool language that can come out of four-wheel drivers' mouths. It's important, you've got to understand it, you've got to speak it. But by putting the remote reservoir out here, we can remove some of the tech out of the main body of a shock absorber. And in certain situations and certain setups, that can actually give us more articulation in our four-wheel drive. Now, a lot of off-road shock absorbers tend to have a larger shaft diameter. That's this shaft here. And we increase the diameter of that shaft because what we're trying to achieve is stability of the piston in here. So this piston's frantically traveling up and down inside the outer body of this shock absorber. And this here is a fulcrum point. And so as the suspension's working, you can imagine that the loads that are coming into this fulcrum point are quite extreme. And the, the piston up in here is a pivot point as well, because you know between those two points, the flex and so on it can be carrying on. So we wanna have a nice stable design, and that's where this larger shaft is going to give us that stable design, especially when this is fully stretched out and that piston is coming down close to the fulcrum point. Now, while we're down this end of the shock absorber, these shocks also have a guard here, because on some designs, and on the 105, this is a case, these shock absorbers can be exposed to rocks and stones being flung at them from the tires. So this guard protects this chrome shaft from being damaged by those rocks. So it's actually a really important design, part of the design and has a really important role. Certainly something when you're servicing your vehicle, make sure these guards are in place and are in good condition because you do not want to damage this shaft. You damage this shaft, it's going to damage that seal. You're going to lose the function of your shock absorber. So as I have been saying, shock absorbers are generating heat and they need to dissipate it and get rid of it into the air that's flowing past them. So having a nice large outside diameter of the main body is critical to that process. And these are a 53 millimeter outside diameter, so they're nice and large. They're gonna achieve that job pretty darn good, I reckon. As I said earlier on, one of the other key factors I was looking for with these shocks is adjustability. So I can just turn this and I can get a different adjustment setting. But because this is on this hose, these remote res and the adjuster can be mounted in a really accessible spot. So if your car's all muddy and dirty, you don't have to climb down underneath and change the shock setting. You can just reach into the wheel well and turn that and you're going to get your adjustment. So any good off-road spring needs to go through a process called scragging. And what's that? Well, it's well, after the spring gets wound and goes through its processes, they put it into a press essentially and compress it to its closed length, like it's completely squashed flat, way beyond what we're gonna use it for. But what that does is it sets the molecular structure, I guess, of the steel so that it retains its free length or its length and ride height for much longer. Now, in my previous four drive, an 80 series Land Cruiser, I had a set of springs from a different manufacturer that went through the scragging process. And those springs over five years never sagged and they were holding considerable weight, did a whole heap of off-road work. And so that scragging process certainly seemed to work in those springs. And I've no doubt that it's gonna work in these springs as well. Now the next process is called shot peening. And this process is quite important because when this spring starts in the, in the factory, it's 
a, literally a straight piece of bar and then it gets wound into this shape. So you can imagine as it's getting wound, the outside of that bar is getting stretched, the inside is getting compressed. So the, the tensions within the, the structure of the steel is under tension and it's compressed and it's all over the place. So to make a good spring, you want to settle all of that back down so that the steel goes, oh, this feels comfortable. This is where I want to stay. So after you've done that, to get that into place, they put it through the shot peening process where they put the spring in a big tumbling machine with steel balls and they get that, those balls are going to bombard the steel all over the place and it brings that molecular structure back to a comfortable place where the spring goes, I like this, okay, and it feels like this is its new home. After they go through that shot peening, they then go through a post heat system and, and it's like a big oven and it sits in there. I think they sit in there for about eight hours, certainly for a long period of time at quite a high heat. And that really just gets the metal back to where it's really, really comfortable in its new shape and form. And again, that's going to give us the long life of holding the vehicle's weight without sag. So it's a really important process. And lastly, there needs to be a good coating applied to the springs. So as the spring's going up and down, that coating needs to go with it. So it needs to be a flexible coating. It needs to be really well bonded to the steel to give, the, give it a long life. So that coating process is quite involved and quite specialised to meet those needs. Because you think these springs are under the vehicle, so they're exposed to all the mud, the water, the rocks, the, they're flexing, they're moving. They've got a whole heap of going on. And then a lot of these springs are exposed to mine sites where you've got an alkaline or an acidic type of mud and moisture that the springs are being exposed to. If that's going to get into the steel, you're going to compromise the integrity of the spring. So having a really good coating is absolutely essential to any spring that you genuinely want to work for you and last for a good period of time. Because let's face it, you're going to invest some serious coin into your suspension, but a good suspension is going to have these features in it so that it's going to give you the best value for money and like I was saying earlier five years out of the previous suspension and at the end of that suspension's life all I really needed was a set of rear shocks so you know it's well worth getting that quality suspension system and I'm looking forward to seeing how this suspension works for me but I genuinely think it's a good quality suspension. Let's have a look at the vehicle going over this speed hump or watershed here. Now watch the body of the vehicle because that's really what's going to tell you what the ride is like. So as you can see right about now, there's lots of movement in the body. That's the shocks on their softest setting. Now the hardest setting all around. And again, the body's moving a lot and the ride was quite uncomfortable. And now this is my preferred setting. And the vehicle was quite comfortable. You can see the body doesn't move around nearly as much. Now I'm doing about 40 kilometers an hour down this bumpy little bit of track and it's got a watershed on it. The shocks are on their softest setting and look how much body movement there is. Now I do it on the hardest setting and again, the ride's uncomfortable and the body movement is huge. It really wasn't very pleasant. Now let's have a look on my preferred settings. I was quite amazed how much more handling I had, but look how little body movement there is compared to the previous examples. Amazing. What I'm trying to show you here is what the ride is like on undulating, bumpy sort of ground with rocks and stuff. On the softest setting, the tyres are coming off the ground and the ride was quite unpleasant. Now on the hardest setting, again the wheels and tyres are coming off the ground and the ride was very harsh as you'd expect. Now on my preferred settings, the ride was quite pleasant and the wheels and tyres tended to stay on the ground more. So I've had the suspension in the vehicle now for about 500 kilometres and I've used it in a variety of different terrains and I'm starting to get a sense of the settings that are going to work for me and, my, and the vehicle and the way I use it. What I'm loving is that adjustability. It's amazing the difference it makes. I, I genuinely believe that, it's quite surprising. So. I mean, at the end of the day, it makes sense, doesn't it? Because that's what it's designed to do, but it's definitely doing that job. Look, guys, if you'd like to upgrade your suspension and you've been thinking about that, well, 
have a chat to the guys at Terrain Tamer, or Don Kayad is their other name. Um, there's a link down below to their e-store. You can head on over there and check out the prices and the products that are available for your vehicle. All right, guys, I'm Mad Matt. Stay safe on the trails.